Show me Ivanovo Oblast on a map. Can you do it? Probably not. So there's a good chance the video you're about to watch will give you a good chunk of information about a piece of Russia you've never heard of. Hello and welcome to 7 Facts. Welcome to one of the smallest federal subjects of Russia, Ivanovo Oblast. How small you ask? Well, it's about the size of Israel. It's a place you probably never heard of, partly because it sits very close to another place that steals all the spotlight – Moscow. Roughly one million people live crammed in this region, most of whom are urban dwellers. So without further ado, let's dive in and see what we can find in Ivanovo. For about 13,000 years, people have been settling in Ivanovo, that we know of. That's how old the oldest archaeological sites found so far are. However, it's hard to connect those early human societies to those that live here today. More recently, around the 6th century AD, the first pheno ugric tribes began to reach Ivanovo. Three centuries later, a mass migration of Slavs towards this region forever changed the demographics of Ivanovo. Starting from this period, Ivanovo became a part of various Slavic tribes that would eventually form the core of modern Russia. Of course, the Mongol hordes of the 13th century utterly devastated this region too, but once that was over, Ivanovo's integration into the Russian states resumed. From the 17th century onwards, Ivanovo became an industrial center, where the Industrial Revolution sprouted an explosion of productivity, especially of textiles. We could go on and on about the history of this place, but this video isn't about history, so if you want to learn more, I highly suggest to read more on your own. The city of Ivanovo acts as the capital of the oblast. In the 19th and early 20th centuries, Ivanovo was nicknamed the Russian Manchester thanks to its booming textile industry. In fact, at one point, this city was the main textile production center of Europe. While that all sounds nice, the workers' living conditions were absolutely appalling, so strikes were quite frequent. One of those strikes that occurred in May 1905, in which 70,000 people took to the streets, was part of the Russian Revolution of 1905, a prequel to the 1917 revolution. Anyway, nowadays Ivanovo is a city of 400,000 with a still existing textile industry, by the way. It might not be a city you heard of until now, but it is filled to the brim with history and tourists, by the way, but more on that later. Before we get to the next fact, I'd like to ask you something. This video isn't sponsored, so perhaps you'd consider supporting this channel by becoming a patron. If you still enjoy my content, go visit my Patreon page and help this channel out. And with that said, let's go to fact number 4. Have you ever wondered, where is one of the most visited small towns in the whole of Russia? Probably not, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. It's here, in Ivanovo, and it's called Plyos. Only about 2,000 people live here, but this small provincial town is very popular among Russians, especially Muscovites. Plyos is a pleasant little place, resembling a 1900s postcard that's part of Russia's Golden Ring, a tourist route linking together a chain of historical towns just north of Moscow. The picturesque landscape around Plyos is completed by a surprisingly large number of old churches, museums, parks, health resorts and of course lots of hotels. I'm sure you didn't expect to find such a place in Ivanovo, but if by any chance you're in these parts, visiting Plyos is simply a must. Let's get back to that golden ring a bit. It is one of Russia's most popular tourist routes that takes you through towns and cities that, rightfully so, have been called open-air museums. At the same time, the area of the Golden Ring is a place where many of the oldest traditions of Russian culture have been strongly preserved. Aside from Plyos, the oblast of Ivanovo has another city that's officially part of this route, its capital. Ivanovo city is indeed the youngest and most industrialized of all the Golden Ring cities and that's precisely why it's part of this select group. Thanks to its industrial heritage that give it a Manchesterian vibe, Ivanovo is a showcase of the constructivist architectural style. 
the booming textile industry of the 19th century left a clearly visible mark on the city landscape. But Ivanovo is also a city with a rich revolutionary history, so if you want to learn how and why the beginning of the 20th century brought about such turmoil in Russia, Ivanovo might be a good place to do just that. Since the 1870s, because of the horrible living conditions of factory workers and miserably low wages, Ivanovo became a hotspot of strikes. With barely enough money to survive, virtually no workers' rights and 12 to 14 hours long workdays, it's not hard to understand their dissatisfaction. This is also partly the reason why capitalism became an almost demonic economic system and communism became a very popular idea. Mass strikes took place periodically in Ivanovo and almost every time the workers managed to achieve some concessions. On the other hand, almost every time soldiers and Cossacks were sent to suppress these protests. The biggest strike took place in the revolutionary year of 1905. 70,000 people from all over Ivanovo joined the strikers. Their demands? An 8-hour working day, higher wages, the abolition of factory police and fines, yes, this was an actual thing, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, and the freedom to create unions and hold strikes. By today's standards, these are not unreasonable demands. Back then, though, it was a very big deal. The strikers elected 151 deputies to represent them and created the City Council of Workers' Deputies, or more accurately, the Soviet of the ivanovo voznesensk workers. This was the first Soviet in Russia. By the way, Soviet means council in Russian. While this organization was indeed led by Bolsheviks, it has to be noted that a Soviet doesn't necessarily adhere to the ideology of the Soviet Union or communism for that matter. In fact, after the 1905 revolution, the upper house of the Tsarist parliament was called the State Soviet. Anyway, now you understand why Ivanovo is considered a revolutionary city and why it played such an important role in the history of modern Russia. As we all know, Tsarist Russia eventually collapsed and the Bolsheviks managed to seize the power. The Soviet Union was created, the government was now working for the betterment of the people, and all was right with the world. Yeah, right. The communist governments that took over nearly half of the world were in most cases just as selfish and indifferent to the needs of their citizens as the governments before them. Why am I telling you this? Well, because eventually the Soviet Union created their own nuclear bombs, and they used them. A lot. In some cases, they researched the civilian applications of nuclear power and in total the Soviet government carried out 124 peaceful explosions that of course exposed civilians to nuclear radiation. The US and other nuclear countries also did the same thing, so this wasn't a uniquely communist practice, not by a long shot. Anyway, the region of Ivanovo, which lies just a few hundred kilometers from Moscow, was actually subjected to nuclear explosions. Project Globus 1, or the Ivanovskaya Hiroshima, was a project of peaceful underground nuclear explosions from the 1960s to the 80s. The idea was to explore the oil shelf present in the area. And of course, accidental nuclear contamination of the region, which is near the now deserted village of Galkino, occurred. To this day, radiation in this area is above normal and there was even a risk of radioactive contamination of the Volga. Despite this, Ivanovo was lucky. The bombs used here were small, 2-3 to three kilotons of power, which is about 9 times weaker than that of the Hiroshima bomb. Other areas of the country, though, weren't so lucky. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Leave your comments downstairs and don't forget there's a Patreon page where you can support this channel. I hope to see you next time. Bye.